Welcome back to part two of our conversation with Chris Voss, where he tells us how to use the word no as yes and the three habits of ineffective negotiators. Stay tuned because part two is just around the corner. Welcome to this edition of Peak Peak Performance Performance Podcast Podcast. with your host, Thor Conklin. Thor will be sharing the necessary tools, strategies, and psychology you'll need to become a peak peak performer performer in any area area of of your life life or business. Thor Conklin here. We give you the tricks, the tips, the tools, the strategy, the technology, and the psychology peak performers use in order to get more done and execute at the highest level. If you know what to do but struggle with getting it all done or simply want to raise your game to the next level, this podcast is for you. Sit back and enjoy. Going back to some of the uh, the language that you use in the negotiations, and I'm going to get this wrong, but you use a phrase that wouldn't it be great if... Did I come close? Well, um, what would happen if? Yeah, what, what, what would happen if? Yes, yes, thank yeah. you. Well, and, and I'm kind of embarrassed to admit how I came across this. <laughs> <laughs> the best ideas always are the easiest, right? You know, because uh, and, and an ex-girlfriend um, who, you know, she's dating a hostage negotiator, so she's got to figure out ways to, to, to get, you know, to, to get him to talk. <laughs> she starts screaming at me one day, and I'm like, What are you yelling at me about? She said, because in the past, when I used to ask you all the time, uh, what if we do this? Is this a good idea? You'd immediately go, no. But as soon as I started saying, what would happen if you'd think about it for a while, think it was your own idea, and then suggest it, and it's driving me crazy. (laughs) (laughs) So instead of going, you know, instead of making a direct su- suggestion, ask somebody a question as if you're asking their advice. And you start thinking about it. And she, she said, yeah, you know, I'd get all puffed up and I'd feel really, really smart because she was asking me advice on something where she was just trying to plan an idea in my, in my head. <laughs> you know, speaking about planning ideas in someone's head, you know, th- there's a lot of uh, people running around out there that are, you know, using NLP and other techniques to manipulate people to do what they want to do. And there was a famous movie back in 2010, which was Inception. Talk a little bit about the the ideas of planting seeds or things into the subconscious mind without the person knowing. Well, it's it's a little bit, you know, the what would happen if is is a great is a great way to do that because what you're trying to do is you're trying to get the person engaged in a thought process and take it as their own. And as soon as they take over ownership on it, you know, that's the whole idea. It's no longer your idea. They've contemplated it and they, they put it in your head, in their own head. Um, you know, another way, another way we do this a lot of times is, first of all, we get completely out of the whole yes dynamic. I mean, we don't try to get people to say yes. We try to get agreement by getting people to say that's right. And then the crazy flip side of it is uh, as guarded and worried and concerned and anxious people are about the word yes, they're ridiculously comfortable saying no to stuff. So we've had people make deals when before they'd say, well, could you do this? And the automatic response is, no, I don't want to do that. Well, the, the fact of the matter is the automatic is, response is no, so let's make them say no and make the deal. And they turn around and come back and say, is this a bad idea? Is it ridiculous to do this? And, of course, since the default answer is no, people go like, no, and they make the deal. <laughs> and it's, it's insane. But I run across this all the time. If the default answer is no, then let's just change the question so the no works for us because they're going to say no. I love that. Use no, use no as the yes. Yeah. No is the you yeah. The new yeah. No is the yes. That's right. Well, what do I say? Uh, no for the dyslexic is on. <laughs> so let's go. <laughs> All right. Very good. You know, and I got to tell you, Chris. You know, you get all kinds of interesting, what I call gurus running around saying, "Hey, you know, I'm the greatest thing since sliced bread in this area." You really walked your talk um and you've been in the middle of this stuff your blog is absolutely amazing it's it's short it's concise and this the material in there is unbelievable and i want to point out one thing 
and the audience can go and look at the various uh, blog posts. But I want to talk about some of the three habits of ineffective negotiators. You just put this out uh, just recently. Do you re do you recall the the three habits? Yeah, I'm gonna. You know, I, I, the the first one I believe is, is what you're referring to is yeah. You know, people being determined to go first. Yes. So so, so tell us what's wrong with going first. Well, everybody shows up really working really hard on having their say. They, they, they're focused on what they want to say. And so it's a, the, uh, it's a, people who are, the only time they shut up is they're thinking about what they want to say. So if that's dominating your head, I mean, for all intents and purposes, you're the equivalent of a paranoid schizophrenic. You've got a voice going in your head. You can't hear me while that voice is still going. So if I speak, I'm wasting my time, number one. Number two, if I listen to you, it's actually going to trigger some chemical brain changes in your brain. You're going to feel good. And you're not going to know that that feeling came from me, but you're going to feel bonded to me. So you're going to like to speak even more. It's going to be a very encouraging process for you. And that's really the secondary benefit. The primary benefit is I want to be listened to, and you're not going to listen to me until you've had your say. Interesting, because they're worried about getting their point across, and until they do, they're not going to settle in. Right, right. I, you know, I even had a, a friend of mine who used to work for the Department of State. We sat down probably about a year ago, and he said, yeah, I remember some negotiation training I, I took, and their number one rule was make sure the other side knows where you're coming from. And I'm like, all right, so that means that you're going to be determined to talk until you feel that I've heard you and you're not going to shut up until you do. So for me to get you to shut up, I just need to let you feel like you were heard. And I thought that's such bad advice, but so many people out there are getting it. If I do the opposite, I've got a massive strategic negotiation advantage. Yeah. I always say God gave us two ears and one mouth for a reason. Yeah. Habit number two is you answer questions when asked. Seem logical to me, but why is that a bad idea <laughs> in negotiations? Yeah, there's two problems with questions when asked. First of all, you know, I think there was even an entire book called The Question Behind the Question. The reason why somebody's asking the question is 90% of the time far more important than the question asked. They've got a context in your head, in their head. You don't know for sure what the context is or why they're asking that question. So you're really answering in the dark. I mean, you're, 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 you're taking a rough guess that you know the motivation. And their motivation might simply be they want information from you, but they don't want to deal with you. You know, it's a cliche in business where people say, how was the meeting? It was great. They asked a whole bunch of questions, but we never heard from them again. <laughs> well, you sat in a meeting, you answered questions. You had no idea why they were asking you those questions. That's the first problem. So what's their hidden agenda? You don't know what it is if you ask, if you answer as asked. And then the second problem, the question, it might be a lousy question. You know, there's, there's an old saying, um, you know, um, a giraffe is a horse designed by committee. <laughs> Half the questions you get, you know, their team came up with and it might just be a lousy question. It might have nothing to do with what is really going on. So if it's a bad question, if it's a poorly worded question, and you answered it, then they don't know what to make of the answer because it was a lousy question to start with. Very few people are good at asking what they really want to know. So there's just so many ways to go wrong if you answer a question without figuring out a way to get context. There's a good chance that you're going to screw everything up. And that's a great time, is it not, to go back to the question, it sounds like? Right. You, you, if, somebody, if somebody asks you a question like, um, when can you deliver? Well, you don't know if they want early delivery or late delivery. Or you don't know if their delivery affects other issues. So she, as a real simple thing to do is say, well, it sounds like delivery is important to you. Do you want it early or you want it late? Well, just, just, <laughs> just, do, just do the label. Oh, and, and let, let them fill it in. Fill See? It. Right. I'm not yeah. listening. I'm talking. 
There yeah, you go. But and then then and then so you're not avoiding the question. You're actually dialing more in on what they're after. Mm. And they don't feel that you sidestep the question. They feel that you're trying to hone in on them even more. And you concern about them and you've listened. Right. Fascinating. All right. Number three, you aren't adamant about ending on a positive note. Oh, God. Yeah. You, you know, um, the last impression is a lasting impression. And most people in trying to get in the last word, you know, they save their cheap shots, their threats, their reminders for last. Like the last thing they're going to say is, and so we just want to remind you, if we don't make this deal, we can go someplace else. You know, that's what they want to say at the end. And that is the last impression is the last impression. That's the most horrible way that you can end a conversation. We in hostage negotiation, we used to do this all the time because people are so concerned about a first impression that they're completely oblivious to what happens on the last impression. Now, you'll fight me over the last word if we've got a battle of cheap shots going. Well, I want to get the last word. I want to remind you that we can always go someplace else if we don't make this deal with you. And that's when you get into this one downsmanship, if you will. Right. I'm a big but, client. If you don't take me, you're going to regret. Yeah, of course. You just keep right. going back and forth. Right. And so, but instead, if I take over the end by saying, look, I just want to remind you, your long-term success is really important to us. We want to make this deal. And 10 years from now, we want to look back on how great the last 10 years were between the two of us. You're going to savor that and you're going to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And you're going to, and because, you, and you're going to, we will savor the last moment till our next conversation. So you will either savor and my positive words will ring in your ears or you'll be pissed to the next conversation. And I will, if I'm adamant about ending on a positive note, then my positive words will ring in your ears to the next time we talk. If you're not getting the results you want and need, I guarantee no one's holding you accountable. Now let's face it, who really wants to be held accountable? Not me, right? Nobody. Why would you want to be held accountable? It's not part of our nature. However, if you want to get exceptional results, you must be held accountable. For $95 a month, our team will hold you accountable to those goals that you want to accomplish in any given month. If you don't like it, ask for your money back. But truly, if you're not getting the results, it's because no one's holding you accountable. The only question is, are you willing to step up? Be on the lookout for part three of our interview with Chris, where he asks, how do I say no to a kidnapper? He explains that and much more on the next episode of Peak Performers Podcast. <laughs>